It's Retro Renaissance Channel. Afternoon, everybody. We're going to watch a movie today. So the way I go about this is I find an interesting title and I just watch the movie and learn as I go. After I watch the movie, I then go back and review the plot summary. The plot summary for this movie tells us it is about a family whose children are traumatized by the death of their mother. But help comes in the most bizarre way. They receive three pieces of a heart that when joined together, give a recording and offer an electric grandmother. They go to a bizarre factory where they customize their new grandmother and within a short time, she arrives. The android is equipped with everything needed as a parent and the boys are charmed. The daughter, however, still misses her mother and she bears no welcome for this interloper. And yes, that is our synopsis, so let's get watching. Ah uh, yes, the Learning Corporation of America, also known as the Learning Company of America, known for such hits as How to Lose Your Lunch Money and The Elephant Who Couldn't Forget. So you know right away we are in for an educational adventure. So let's learn. Before we dive in, who's in this little movie? Well, let's take a look at our cast which is actually pretty impressive. You have Maureen Stapleton, who is an iconic actor. For us 80s loving fans, you may have caught Maureen in Johnny Dangerously, The Money Pit, or The Cocoon series. She would be our electric grandmother. Her family was of Irish descent. Maureen moved to New York City at the age of 18 and did modeling to pay the bills. A Tony Award winner, she made her Academy Award nominated film debut in Lonely Hearts in 1958. I'm thrilled, happy, delighted, Sober. <laughs> Next, our dad is played by Edward Herman. You might know Edward from the movie Overboard or the 80s version of Annie. However, his most iconic role would be the lead baddie in The Lost Boys. Don't ever invite a vampire into your house, you silly boy. It renders you powerless. Did you know that? Of course. Everyone knows that. Has everyone gone crazy here? What's the matter with all of you? and later as the patriarch of the Gilmore family as Richard Gilmore. Edward was the father of Ryan Herman and Emma Herman. His stepson Rory Herman is named after the Gilmore girl's main character. And Edward was in many projects with over 134 credits. He was quite the icon who we sadly lost in 2014. But I am begging you, please, please do not make me go back down there because that guy is boring. Emily, she's not up here. Thank you, Daddy. Then we would have Paul Benedict. Paul would be in the movie's cocktail, Arthur II, on the rocks, and if you're pushing up roses, you may know him from Murder, She Wrote. And of course, the Jeffersons as Harry Bentley. Well, oh, hello, Mr. J. Bye, Bentley. Bye, Bentley. <laughs> You know, that's the first time I've seen your door slam from this side. <laughs> now, two of the kids of the films were not career actors that I could find. Agatha was played by Tara Kennedy, who was in this film and some theater works. And Charles Fields, who was Timothy, has a total of 10 credits, including the 80s film The Manhattan Project. Then we have Tom, played by Robert McNaughton, who is probably best known as the brother Michael in E.T. Okay, they're closed. It's gonna kill you. Okay, uh, swear it one more time. I have absolute, you have absolute power. Yes. <laughs> mm. And has a few other credits, but does not seem to do much acting these days. Now with our introductions over, let's get into the movie. Now the opening is a man talking about an electric grandmother and this song which is so tiring. After the song, we start with a thunderstorm and a girl who's not loving the storm. And right away we can see that this movie loves taking its time with the scenes. For example, this very long Zoom. My brother Timothy and my sister Agatha. Then we hear a commotion and it's clear something is not well with mom. The doctor examines mom for a total of one second. Then the verdict is in, sadly mom has passed. 
And then we have this scene where the doctor gives the bad news eventually. Oh my gosh, just say it already. I know I just said it, but this movie drags out every scene. You could probably watch it at double speed, and if they cut everything out that's nonsense, it could be a 10 minute long movie. Now we cut to the young girl who is now grown up, and that is Agatha. Yet another scene that goes on about three times too long. After the passing of mom, Aunt Clara shows up, and it seems like this may not be such a good thing based on the reaction of dad. What a surprise. You don't think I'd stay away at a time like this, do you, Henry? Then a chopper arrives and drops something. Go! Get to the chopper! They all run to see what it is and it drops three chunks of plastic heart. After some confusion, they figure out this puzzle. I'm not sure how they figured out this very complex three-piece puzzle, but they did it. And it makes a heart. The heart then lights up and talks and it says something. Uh, uh, listen now. We are the machines that remember we are. Let me rewind that. Fantochini. Daddy? Uh, 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 listen now. We are the machines that remember we are. We are the grandmothers. Electric? The Fantochini electric grandmother. Does he say, bring me some pepperoncinis? Now, I'm not 100% sure what they're saying, but it sounds like they're saying an address. Preposterous. It's a one. Give it a try. Give it a try. So the best I can decipher is that the electric grandmother is at this address. So a helicopter flies over your house, drops a toy, and it demands you go to a random address. And they don't really question this, and they're like, all right, let's go. Once they arrive, Dad feels this may not be so safe, so he tries really hard to prevent them from going into the dark factory. Uh, now wait, don't run, uh, boys. Boys. After they manage to walk in, they are in a dark room, which really does not seem to bother any of them at all. They don't even knock, and this doesn't really look like a public place, so I'm pretty sure that's breaking and entering. And then they hear a horrifying voice. Shapes, sizes, colors. Especially grandmothers. And the family is not even phased by this. I mean, the proper reaction would be... Nope. But no, they're like, this is fine, let's keep going. And then it gets even creepier with some amazing 80s special effects Whoa. and creepy dolls and mannequins. Oh look, someone is here. Hey, we broke oh. in. What's up? Oh, it's Pepperchini. So Pepperchini gives Agatha a key and lets her See know that key? only she can bring this grandma to life with this Take very out, special Friday. key. With this key, you and you alone can bring your electric grandmother to life. My name's Agatha, and I don't believe in electric grandmothers. The power is hers. You get to pick a grandma. So here we see Agatha being a little brat. You'll see this is a common theme through this whole movie. And not only do you get to pick out a grandma, this grandma has a return policy. You see, all our grandmothers are made to order on the premises and are sent to families, select families, I may say, for a 30-day trial basis. If at the end of 30 days, any member of your family is dissatisfied with your grandmother, she's returned to the factory under no obligation to you whatsoever because it's always important to make sure you can return your Terminator grandma. The next scene we see is basically a grandma Build-A-Bear. You pick your floaty base. I guess they're shadows. I mean, they don't look like shadows to me, but obviously they are. And I just have to ask again, why is no one in this family phased by what is going on right now? So to recap, the strange toy drops. It has a sentient message. It says, go to a creepy factory, go into a dark room with creepy decor, and now you're gonna build a grandma. Brother. And it's Agatha's job to pick the color of hair. And her stank face reaction says it all. Oh, I see. You wish to leave the choice to the boys. Now to pick the eyes, they have to look through a giant kaleidoscope. I mean, it seems like this would be easier if they could just flip through some sort of catalog or book, maybe. Next, we have to pick the voice for Grandma. And to do this, they have to speak into a phonograph. 
Now dad's a little hesitant about this, and honestly I'm thinking, wait, now he thinks something is wrong? There were no other clues that maybe this is a bit macabre and a little dangerous, but it's the voice that pushes him over the edge. Your turn. This is ridiculous. Well, even more ridiculous not to try, don't you think? And then you hear a disembodied voice that comes to life. Henry! 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 Hello. 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 I mean, I've seen a lot of movies and this sort of thing usually works out just fine. Then there is a riddle. Why can we get our grandma and go home? Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. But one of these mornings, you'll get a surprise. Ooh, what kind of surprise? Now they get home and Aunt Clara is not on board with everything that's happening. And she is out of here. How dare you say robot. A robot? I mean, why was Aunt Clara even in this movie? They introduce her character, she says she's here to help, and then she leaves. She didn't really add much to the movie at all. Then the day ends and it's morning. And today might be the day when their special package arrives. Sure enough, it's the chopper. Oh, it's Fantochini, not Pepperchini. Now it makes more sense. And it plops Robogran right on the lawn. That doesn't look suspicious at all. And they're not sure what's going on. What is it? What is it? What do they mean, what is it? Well, I don't know, you picked a robot grandma the day before, and the next day a robot-sized grandma casket arrives. What could it be? I mean, what's wrong with these kids? Did they just forget the day before? Finally, they go out to the lawn and they open the casket to find a casket mask. I guess it's more of a sarcophagus is what the dad calls it, but we're going to call it a casket. And there we are. There's the Robo Grandma Build-A-Bear that they picked out, but it needs a key. Remember the key from earlier? Where Ooh. exactly is Agatha sticking that key? But then she's alive. So pretty much it's the grandma version of weird science. By the way, why are we wearing bras on our heads? Ceremonial. Grandma gets up and there's very little talking and she asks if they need breakfast. And they're like, yeah, this all totally checks out. Let's go eat. Now they just continue their day like they do not have a brand new robot grandma in the home. And it's breakfast time. And during breakfast, grandma squirts out some cocoa from her finger. That's right. We have finger cocoa. Not sure I want to drink that. Oh, and she has finger milk. And finger orange juice. Grandma has all the liquids in her fingers. I mean, if this is just a robot and there's no magic involved, exactly where is all this random liquid being stored? And does it have to be refilled? Like, does grandma have to go to the store and pour a gallon of milk in her mouth to get it come out of her finger, maybe? Anyway, we'll ride with it. So we cut to Agatha brushing her hair and everyone else is outside having a snowball fight and all seems good. Agatha is still not sure about grandma. So she drinks the finger liquid, and in the meantime, Grandma's touching all kinds of things and playing with hair. And I'm not sure we want to drink the finger milk after Grandma's been working in the kitchen. I didn't see any kind of hand-washing techniques going on. I'm just saying it doesn't seem very sanitary. Finally, it looks like Agatha and Grandma are starting to bond by brushing each other's hair. And then Grandma says, I'll give you braids, and that is when Agatha snaps. Brush it and braid it for you. No! You can't do that! Only my I'm sorry. And we kind of find out that that was something her mom used to do, and that she misses her mom and does not want to feel like her mom is being replaced. Then we get this stare from Robo Grandma. To be fair, other than finger liquids, I would not mind someone doing my laundry and basically being a Robo maid. I'd be down for that. Next, we see the kids having trouble flying a kite and Grandma helps. I'm not sure how this happened, so is this magic or is she a robot? I mean, is the kite magic? Is grandma magic? They don't really establish this previously, so I'm not sure. So they hang the clothes on the kite because why not? No, wait a minute. How did the clothes get up there? Agatha sees all this, but she's still not impressed. Okay, so I think I got it. Maybe this is more like a Mary Poppins thing, but a robot. That's going to be what I'm going with. That's the understanding I'm going to have moving forward with this movie. The day ends and grandma tells a story. Well... I store up everything you say or do. So years a long and everything story. Said and did will still be here. Okay. 
What was I saying at 3.30? A very long story. 3.30. Of no real consequence. And then we have some muffins. Grandma has pocket muffins too. Hey, what time is it? It's muffin time. And she also has this ominous message. Well, I store up everything you say or do. So years from now when you're married with children of your own. That's a billion years away. <laughs> the memory of everything you said and did will still be here. Okay. I remember everything. I mean, I'm down for pocket muffins. Because then you can have cupcakes for breakfast. And if you call them muffins, it's okay. All right, nine o'clock, time for bed, day ends. Timothy, Timothy, never you fear. Trouble won't trouble you now that I'm here. Oh, she sings lullabies too. So this is like a Robo Mary Poppins. A Mary Roboppins. Nailed it. Agatha is sad. I mean, that's fair. Roboppins cannot replace her mom. The Electrogramma says she'll always be there for Agatha. And Agatha calls BS on that right away. And she fears that she too will leave just like her mom. But Roboppins just takes it in, says goodnight, Agatha, and it ends with this glare. Dad is downstairs, seeming distraught. And then she says, I wish I had your talent for getting along with the children. You do. You'll see. Good night. Mm -hmm. After that, she plugs herself in, I'm guessing, to recharge. And then we get this awesome... And then we get this awesome recharging dance. This came out of nowhere, but I am here for it. Kind of reminds me of that old PBS show, if anyone ever saw it, called Sit and Be Fit. Agatha surprises in a mood. Kind of seems like she's the girl version of Caillou. Oh no, Caillou, that's not today. The circus isn't till tomorrow. No, no, it's today. <laughs> I got all dressed. As the day ends, Agatha awakes and creeps downstairs. She sees Robobopin sitting in her chair. It's kind of a shame Agatha missed that epic dance. Agatha complains some more and yanks her plug. What's the plan here? Then Robobopins open her eyes and remember, Robobopins remembers everything. That could be problematic. We wake up to another snowball fight. I guess they have a lot of snowball fights. They must have a lot of time on their hands. I don't know. The kite thing is still going strong. Still not sure how that works. Oh, that's how it works. So it is magic. All seems well. Oh no, I guess the magic is gone. Oh, never mind. It's just Agatha being a little b again. And I keep expecting Robo Boppins to just lose it like Terminator or Megan and just kind of go crazy. But we'll see. So Grandma lets us know because Agatha basically hates her guts and her sole mission was to make all the family whole and happy, she has failed and now has to go back to the factory. I mean, remember the warranty. Satisfaction is guaranteed. However, the brother has a great idea. You. It's you. Send her back. Send her to the scrap heap. Oh, now, Timothy. Grandma has to leave, and it's time to go back. They say goodbye. It's heartfelt. Agatha just hasn't really been able to deal with the loss of her mom, so this is just kind of where it ends. Honestly, I think Agatha just needs to get some counseling. But in a moment of emotion, she runs out in front of traffic when Robo Boppin saves her life. And I get the time that this was made was in the 80s, and the budget was probably not great. But come on, that car clearly missed Grandma. <laughs> And it's this moment that changes everything. This is when Agatha realizes that she's not human and can't really leave like her mom did. And Agatha starts to come around. Now we see the kids starting to get older and Grandma's still there taking care of them. And then the movie comes to an end. What a good place to end this movie. Just kidding. They drag it out. Then it finally ends. Nope. They drag it out more. I mean, it's over. In the movie. Grandma promises not to leave again, and this seems like this would be a great time in the movie. But no, it goes on for quite some more time. They are in the snow, having fun, fade out, and credits. But no, it goes on to show what happens after they age. 
and the kids get older. And eventually it shows Grandma back in the factory talking to other Robo-Grandmas just remembering the good times she had. Then we go back to the start of the movie where it turns out that this was Michael also remembering the fond times with Grandma. He goes up to her and says, now that we're getting older, we need you and miss you. Please come back. And she does. Now, I mean, this is kind of a depressing thing. Like, after you're done being used by the kids, you just sit in the factory forever. They picked her custom made, so it's not like she can go to another family. Do they recycle her? Agatha is so happy. They stare at the tomb and see Grandma hanging clothes once again, taking care of the kids. And then we have a nice song, and finally the movie ends. Agatha, Agatha, never you fear. Trouble what? It doesn't end, we're on to the next morning. The song is back and they're dragging it out even more. But then finally, for real, the movie ends. So the electric grandmother. Yes, the plot is absurd. However, it really turned out to be a sweet little movie. And at just 45 minutes long, it's a nice watch. This movie has a 4.5 on Amazon with no one-star review, so it's clearly loved by many. One reviewer, Alan, says, Ever see a happy ending that makes you force tears back? Well, The Electric Grandmother is that movie that does it for me. I don't know what buttons are being pushed, but push they are. I even watched this movie quite a few years ago to prove myself that I wouldn't shed a movie tear. That said, this is an excellent movie that really does justice to the written fiction of Ray Bradbury translated to the screen. Highly recommended. Yeah, and I didn't mention that before, but this was based on a short story by Ray Bradbury, who's a very well-renowned writer. Now, I'm not sure where you can find this film. I will see if I can upload it here. If possible, I'll put a link in the description. Now, I just want to ask, have you ever had a girlfriend who would randomly catch things on fire? No? Well, we found one. It's on this video over here. Thanks, friends.